Hello, this is Christian. Welcome. In this video, we're going to do a little demo using uh, something called Live Update. Now, Live Update is really how you can enter data in a text field such as this one here. And at the same time, as soon as you type this letter, letter, you want to also, you know, show this letter or this character or this word, whatever it is, in another field or another area on the same page, okay, without refreshing the page. So, um, we're going to do that. And at the same time, this message box here contains some text. And the way I have it here is that I set it to a max length of 100 characters only. And I literally just put the numbered characters down here in this box here and this tag here. And as soon as you add some data or some text in this field, we're going to subtract the number of characters from the 100. So it shows you how many characters you have left, right? And we do that using just pure JavaScript. Okay, so um, this is the form on the left side here. My form has a name and ID. Also, make it so that my form cannot be submitted and be turned false here. That means if I click submit over here on the, on the right side, you see nothing is uh, being submitted. Okay. Um, and then you see down here I have two input fields. One is this line here, I have an ID of the name uh, with the name text or txt for both name and ID. Uh, the text area here, same idea. I gave it a max length of 100 characters only. And then I have a span tag to display the number of characters remain as you type letters in this field. And the go button, of course, and then the clear button here. Okay, so there are, I'm going to show you how to do this like four different ways. And we'll see which one is, you know, more convenient or more, um, I guess, uh, which is better for, for your, your use. So down here, I have a script tag. I'm going to go and the first method we're going to do is using the traditional um, or the classical DOM functions like the get element by D, query selector, get elements by tag name, and so on. Those are DOM functions and using those functions, so really we are not relying on the forms object. Okay, so I go so down here, we're going to go and create uh, some variables. So we can say const uh, txt for that txt field. So document dot get element by ID and the ID is really just txt. Okay, that would point to that uh, first input field. I also need the one for the message, so the const msg. And this time we'll use the query selector. So just to show you that you can, right? And this one has an ID of uh, pound sign msg. And then we'll also target this uh, span tag here. So const span and this is going to be document that get element just a couple of ways to okay, get by you know by name right because I have a name called um, uh, count okay so we put count here and it's going to be in a list of names uh, of tags so we're going to grab the first one only and that should grab that first field all right um, let's fix this I'm just typed over here now then we are going to do a um, add an event listener to the text field so that when we type something over here it's going to trigger an event so we'll do like txt add event listener and we're going to listen to an input uh, event okay and then we're going to call the event function uh, a uh, anonymous function inside this function then is where we do the update so what are we doing we're going to pass the data from this text field to the message field. That's all I'm doing, right? So we'll say the uh, msg.value, we'll get the value. It's going to be assigned with the txt.value. And that should be it. So let's save this and see what happens on the right side. If I type an A, you see that A shows up down there. So there you go. This is live update, right? Now I also want to do so that when I type something here, uh, I'm, I'm going to count the number of characters in this field and subtract that, you know, from 100. So then the next line would be something like a count, the span, um, the inner text, use the inner text, equals the, um, from the message dot max length, there's a max length function. It, it, this will grab the variable or the value from your max length attribute here, which is 100. I want to subtract that and then subtract the msg of the value dot length, the number of characters in this field. Okay, and it will update that live. So save this again. Let's go over here. You type in A 
and you can see that now it updates here and also updates down here if I go ahead and delete you know my data up here it updates right away now I also want to do so that when I type some field data down here as you can see it does not update right so you want to do that as well very simple we already target this MSG here so we can go down here and add another event for that um, uh, tag so I'm going to use the on input method using the arrow function of course you can do it in different ways and in here all I'm, all I'm doing is really I'm not going to update that content here right I'm just going to basically update this line so I just copy this line and put it right here and I think that's about it I right, see so I'll save this file and now if I go up and type in A B C and D E F G and we go it works just fine Right. The only thing is that every time we, when I test something here, everything gets reset, which is okay. That's what I want. So, so this is the uh, you know the classical way how to update live data using the uh, DOM functions. Again, I'm not relying on the form at all. I can do this without the form at all. So, that's one method. Method. Now the other way is I'm going to go through the forms object. As you know, every element inside your form can be controlled. Well, not every element. There are about um, six. I think that there are about six form elements that can be controlled and accessed directly through the form object okay and so that's why i gave it a name just because i can access it so the elements you'll be um, using primarily are the input uh, the text area um, button and uh, something that you don't see here is the uh, field set and i think this is the output as well okay so let's let's go uh, uh, do this time going through the uh, form object okay so by doing something kind of similar here except I don't need this anymore so I'm going to turn these off and uh, I'm going to do uh, using so instead of doing this way I'll keep those below but let's do it um, I'm going to get a constant f f will be pointing to my form so document dot form if you can do this way forms gives you a list of forms and we'll have one so you can do that will grab you the first form right which is okay but if you know a name if you have a name for your form like I did here I called it my form if that's the case then I can you know target the name directly by going like this and that is gonna be my form okay and so now um, once we have that oh I shouldn't have to leave my, my span so let's put this back again Uh, I'll use the get element by ID. It's called um, count. Okay. I, I'd use it differently but before, but this is still be fine. So we got that. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, um, also add an event. But this time I don't need to create, you know, the um, message and the text field. I go directly to the F object, right? So I can do something like this. So right here. To like f dot, uh, the name of that input is called txt, right? And then I can go and do um, I use the on input here, it just it's just nicer, and is equal to a arrow function, and then something like that. So inside here is the same as this really. Uh, I could just put this inside here, so I I would actually use this part here. But let me copy this and put it right in here. Okay, let me turn this off. Okay. Um, and now the MSG, I don't have MSG anymore, right? So I access this MSG through the F object. So F dot MSG, right? F dot text. And again, this is F dot MSG, F dot text. And that's the reason why I cannot do the span. Okay, you can't because span is not a part of the uh, form controls. So you cannot access those uh, information here directly using the object notation or through the array of the elements. Uh, index so this is right you you don't have an option for this so that's for the input I do the same for the output um, for the message so here I'll just do this f dot msg and then down here is the same so f dot msg and f dot msg okay so you can see that it's kind of similar except I'm going through the f object the form object instead of creating all those you know different tags different objects.
So save this and let's go over here and try. And you can see it still works just fine, right? No problem. So that's by going through the F object. Now notice I have to do this span I mentioned here, right? Because span tag is not an input tag, it's not part of the form control. However, there is a thing you can do with this. You can replace the span and use the output tag. Okay, the output tag, that's what it's used for. Used to output data to this to this web page. So as you can see, it's an output. Now output is a part of the form control uh, um, groups. So that means you can access its data, the name of this uh, output here, through the dot count. So then I don't need this line here anymore. So line 86 and 88 can be removed. And then here I will just do, instead of span, I would say uh, this whole line here, it will be f dot count dot value, right? Because it has a value attribute. Um, a little bit weird how this works. The yeah, value attribute here can actually, you know, get the data in here and replace the data inside here, not the attribute actually on the like the like you will see on the input tag. Okay, so I do that, and then down here also same. So f dot count dot value equals the other ones, and you will see that it should still work just as fine. So we we'll go here a b c and then d e f. Here we go. All right, so you can see that. Going through the form, you can make your code much shorter, and you don't have to, you know, target each of these uh, uh, controls separately using separate objects. All right, so that is the uh, second method. The third way you can do is you can go and use the elements event attribute, right? So um, I'm going to go and do something kind of, you know, interesting here. So you can see that this part here and this part is kind of the same. The only difference is that if you call on the txt, I, I would call the msg uh, message field to get that value. If I activate or click on the message field here, message box, I don't do this again. I mean, there's no point to do that. I mean, what I'm saying is that you don't have to do this again. It's redundant, right? Because I'm, I'm basically uh, copying this to myself, to itself. So it's not really, it will, it'll work, as you can see, right? It'll work, but you don't need to do that because it's redundant, okay? So instead of doing this way, you could, um, remove that and then pull this into a function. So I'm going to go down here and create a function called, um, maybe let's do like a const update, okay, error function. And then inside here, I'm going to, um, you know, do this part here. So I'm going to copy this part and put it down here. All right. And so this function will be calling the update. Right, and same thing here. This will also be calling the update. Oops. Okay, but I need to get the value um, of the, the the input text here. Okay, so when I click on the input here, I should get the value from that element tag, and so on. So of course, there are lots of ways. One way you can do is that okay, I'm going to accept this object. This function will receive, let's just say, um, you know, uh, two elements or just one element the element itself, when I call this function up here, let me do a right click and format this. Okay, so when I call the uh, input for the text, I'm going to pass this to this function, this uh, text object, right? So whatever it is, I'm going to say, um, you know, what uh, f dot txt, right? It will point to that element. And then I'll use that element here and, and put that in here. Okay, so this will be just the element, whatever that element is, in this case it's the txt. And then msg will be still pointing to that. Okay, so let's save this and um, let's see if this still works. So go ahead and type in something over here, abc, as you can see, it still works just fine, except this part I didn't, I didn't uh, um, update yet, right? It does work because there's an error. The reason why is because now, I did not pass anything to the uh, message box here. So when I do something like this, there's no, there's no data here. It causes an error. So if you look at the console, you should see an error saying there's no such thing as, you know, there's no value defined on line 94, which is this guy right here, right? So then you have to do something about this variable. So what you can do is you can say, you can check to see if this variable is supplied or not. Uh, if you don't have this variable, then you don't need to do this 
line here. Okay, so you could do something like this. You can say, if there's an element, right, if it's true, then only then you will run this line. Otherwise, don't do anything, right? Just return all. And so now it should work. So if I type an A here, right, so it, it works fine. If I type a D, E, F here, as you can see, it works just fine. Okay, so now we got this uh, function created down here. Then let's go into number three. Number three is by doing something directly to the attribute, uh, to the element. So I'm going to turn these off or delete these. Okay. And we're going to call this function directly from the uh, tag up here. So like the input tag, I'm going to go over here and I want to say on input is equal to the update function. Okay, I'm going to pass this function though the element, which is this guy right here, the input. So this is just really this. Okay, so when I get to this here, now where is this f coming from? Right? So I remove the f here, but assume I don't have it, what do I do? Well, you can pass that as one of the elements. Say I put right in the front here, okay, the first parameter. So up here, I will pass in the form object, which is, you know, document dot my form or since you're already inside the form control the form group you can just pass the name of this form directly here to this function my form just like that okay and let me put this in a separate line you can see a little bit easier okay so we pass in the uh, my form object and then this refers to this attribute uh, um, tag so it goes on here it should work just like before let's save this and do something here as you can see it works just fine right no problem uh, this is not working yet because we haven't you know invoked that function yet so likewise you can go down here to the text area and I'm gonna do a um, new line here on input is equal to update and this time I'm not passing anything to it okay um, I'll pass it just the F the F for the form so it will do this we'll update that but since I'm not doing, you know, a copy itself to itself, I don't need the second parameter. And just like that. And let's see if it works. Um, okay. Uh, something is wrong. Uh, let's see what happened here. I think I might have forgot something or um, something. Um, yeah, my bad. It's not, it's not F. It should be uh, my form. Sorry. Yeah, it should be my form. Okay. So here we go. All right. There you go. It works just fine. And... So there it is, right? So that's the third method. The last method I'm going to show you is you can do everything in line. So that means you don't even need all of these, okay? All this can be, you know, ignored. I don't need script at all. And you do everything here, okay? So it's like you're combining that script down here with the uh, uh, attribute here. So over here, instead of doing this way, I want to do the code right in here. So again, as soon as long as your input or tags are inside your form control, you can access this name directly within the form. So when I do the input on the tag here, input and the uh, input tag here, I'm going to change the value or actually update the message value dot value equals to this value, right? Again, this points to this in, uh, input tag. So if I save this, go over here, you can see it works just very, very beautifully, right? Uh, you can put this here, or you can actually put the name txt, it doesn't matter. Uh, either one is fine. But if since you're already here, just put this, okay? Um, I would recommend that. And then, also want to do the countdown here, right? So you can put a semicolon here, and then do a, um, you know, the, i put the next line here, you can see better. The uh, uh, count dot value equals the msg dot max length minus the msg dot value dot length right that's what we had earlier so again if you type it now you see that this number also gets updated okay and then finally the text area will be kind of same remove that and then we'll do just the uh, count dot value is msg dot max length minus msg in this case, it would be just this. Yeah, you can use MSG or just this uh, value dot length. And, you know, let's put here this. It refers to this single tag. 
and so it should work beautifully just you see here okay so there you go i hope this is going to give you some ideas how you can update you know your sites using this little uh, uh, some some tips here to make your code you know easier simpler may not be the best options but you know i hope this gives you some idea so good luck and uh, have any questions feel free to post comments below thank you for watching have a good day bye